Now, I love a good questions and answer sessions, but normally I'm answering questions that people send me about business plans or some problem they've got in the business. But we've got a bit of time here in the podcast studio in London to kill between our podcasts because two guests didn't turn up. Let that be a lesson. They won't be getting rebooked. Good manners cost nothing. So I thought we'd put Alicia and Molly to the uh, to the questions and answer test. And we've come up with a new little segment called uh, Beat the Boss. And I've got no idea what they're going to ask. I always, if I ever do questions, I always would rather answer them on the spot anyway. I always think they sound a bit more authentic. So I've got no idea what they're going to ask me. Uh, I've promised that this is a a um, a words embargo um, amnesty, so uh, no one gets fired for whatever gets spoken about. Uh, so let's see, let's see what happens. Hello, girls. Hello. Hello. <laughs> You're both. I don't know who should be more nervous, me or you. <laughs> so Matt, um, first question: What is the best and worst thing you've learned from an employee? The best and worst thing learn from an employee i don't know if this answers the question directly but i always like to say that everything's my fault because if i if, if something's my fault then i feel that like i can find you know find a solution to fix it whereas if i'm always blaming everybody else then it never really comes out with it you know i can never really get a productive outcome and you know i it's no secret that my um my recruitment over the years has not been great you know and we you know in some of the, i mean i've got some staff who've been with me for 10 plus years but you know the, the vast majority uh, it's like revolving doors and you know I, uh, I i always i guess always moan about employ this and employ the other but it was only maybe i don't know nine months 12 months or so ago i i heard someone else talking on a podcast about the fact um that you know ultimately if you can't keep your staff then it's it's the employer's fault as opposed to the employee's fault. And I think, you know, listening to that was like a big wake up call for me. Not that necessarily that the employees were perfect and I was crap, but that ultimately looking with the mind, with the point of view that everything's my fault. Well, I employed these people and I managed them or didn't manage them. And I could have fired them at any, any stage uh, along the way. So like I said, probably not a direct answer to your question, but it, 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 it it's, um, for, for me, it was the, the the biggest learning learning from it that, I guess, how do we get the right staff? How do we not get the wrong staff? And how do we how do we not lose the ones that we want to lose? Because you know, and as much as on the one hand I can say that, I've, well, I don't know if I've if, I, if I've honestly ever lost a member of staff that I really cared about. I don't really cared about because I mean I guess you know, it could probably solve most problems with money and if I really cared that much I could have I could have got them back with more money. But whilst there's probably no one that I shed a tear about about losing, there's certainly people where it's less convenient to lose them than not. And uh, you know, it's, re recruitment is one of the most expensive costs of a business, you know, but both the recruitment fees, the amount of wasted time going through interviews, the amount of time it takes to to bring that person up 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 to a level of doing what you want. So to not lose people is important. Uh, and you know, there's been so many ones along the way that in hindsight we never needed to lose, but you know, they were just mismanaged or neglected or whatever. So um, so yeah, I think I think my biggest learning, both good and bad, is that the recruitment of the right employees and the keeping of the right employees is really really 100% on you as the business owner or you as the you as the manager. But let me throw that question back to you. Do you agree with what I just said? We do. Yes. Is that what I'm going to get from you both? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, here, here, I agree. <laughs> Lee actually leads us on to our next question, which is, what's been the juiciest firing and why did you fire the person? What did they do? The juiciest firing. I mean, we did a podcast earlier today with Harvey, who, um, you know, from So Solo Crew, and he said, I forget his exact words, but he was saying something about how you know he he loved to fire that person or something because because they, because they breached his loyalty. I mean, after twenty plus years of firing people, I always say it never gets any easier. It never gets any nicer. I mean, unless you are a total twat. I don't think, you know, I don't think fire, firing anyone is never nice unless, I mean, you know, th there was a time re actually pretty recently, two or three months ago, where a guy had stolen from me. I mean, like physically entered the bank account and physically just transferred the money to himself. I mean, there's no ambiguity around this. He just stole the fucking money. And so I always, I mean, when I found out about it, I fired him immediately. But even that, it's, it's not, it's not nice. I would say nice. I don't mean, I didn't feel bad inside in it but it's not a fun activity you know mm -hmm. i don't feel good after i'd rather have the fucking money back and you yeah, know and, and, you and, 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 and he he did what he did i mean you know i had to fire someone recently for absolute total incompetence uh i mean just just 
what wasn't doing their job at all. She was also a very, very difficult character to manage. She's a very awkward person. Uh, and when I fired her, I, I mean, again, still felt bad doing it, but she made it very easy for me because as soon as I started to do it, she starts threatening me and blaming everybody else. And I think, you know, you know what, I'm actually glad you've done that because uh, because it kind of takes takes any negative emotion away from me. I'm 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 glad I'm glad I did it. But I mean, no, I don't, I've not got not got any great stories of crazy you know yeah. crazy things that happened you know i mean th thieving is pretty is, is pretty, pretty bad juicy. that's pretty, pretty spicy bad. i'm not gonna lie i mean obviously we, we all know the story about uh about the girl who had a little sleep du had a <laughs> sleep during girl. work time <laughs> but i mean you know she wasn't fired for that she would have yeah she would have been been fired anyway i mean yeah i don't i, don't, I mean i think unless it's something like absolute gross misconduct like stealing i think it's, it's very rare that anyone would ever get fired for one individual thing you know it would be a it would be just an accumulation of ultimately not being not being up to scratch yeah fair enough <laughs> pretty spicy <laughs> <laughs> so next question if you had to swap job roles with someone within the company who would it be and why you because you seem to be a, you seem to be in a different luxury location every, every week. <laughs> I, di I didn't get to fly in this morning from Brussels. <laughs> Who would I swap with and why? I don't know. I mean, you know what I love about my job is the variety of it. Really, I mean, if if I but that's just because it suits me. If I had to pick something else, probably probably something like what you guys do. I mean, I, I love marketing, love love branding. Uh, I mean, it's something I've always loved, but you know, I don't think I've ever, until the last year or so, really appreciated what a fundamental skill for for business success it would be. When I was thinking earlier about, you know, um, if I was if I was giving, I say Harley, not so much Harley now because she's already where she's at in life. But you know, if if I can take a more impressionable Nelle and and give her two or three key things market marketing and engineering as a background i think you know the, the ability to engineer your way through a situation you know whether that's a, a user interface or you know or, or just thinking in a logical manner and the ability to market you know i.e get your product known your business known yourself known i think those two key skills are absolutely fundamental to anything so i guess and i also do very much enjoy them i say both of them i wouldn't consider myself an engineer in any way shape or form but i know it's very necessary but marketing i'd, I'd be involved in marketing about just what, what i was doing What's the shadiest line you've ever crossed in pursuit of success? <laughs> <laughs> if you have, <laughs> listen. Everybody's crossed. Everybody's crossed lines in business. It's it's impossible. It's impossible not to cross lines. I think. And if if you're going to push the envelope, I mean, I don't think that means I'm not advocating for one minute that someone wakes up to go and do something illegal. But you know, there's there's lots of let's say rules in particularly in uk business whether it's to do with employment or to do with accounting or to, you know whatever it is i mean there's there's lots of things where you know you might need to skirt around the edges or or or, or push push the boundaries i think you know it's I, I don't know many people i say i don't know many people i probably don't know anybody who's not had to had to push some boundary during that time I and mean, like everybody's got their own view on what you know what's acceptable and what isn't you know what's right and what's wrong and it's all very good for people to moralize when they've already when they've already succeeded when they've already achieved something oh i'd never do that with bollocks you know you you you, you were doing it plenty of times it's just you don't need to anymore so you change change your view but i mean listen I, you know I, I don't want to do something that's going to end myself in prison uh but you know more more than happy to to push the envelope i mean if we're trying to talk about one spe let's say one specific thing that i would advocate a rule that everybody breaks <laughs> <laughs> is i I, th I think employment law is fucking horrible it's you know it's it's, it's a t it's a total what's that minefield minefield's not even the word it's completely geared towards the employer as opposed to the business owner and again i'm not saying for one minute that that employees should be treated badly but it's i think it's a very it's a very un, un, unfair coin and i always think that if you need to fire someone because they're a bad egg in a business then i would fire them there and then without without any recourse to the not any recourse without any regard to the law and take the punishment that comes with it if, if you get one because i think you know again depending what the person is and what the situation is very often the damage they will do for being for, to continue to be involved in the business is much more expensive than the money that you would have to pay them for getting rid of them uh, but i also think the flip side of that argument is if someone is suing you 
unfairly. A lot of the time, your lawyer will be saying, oh, just settle. You know, it's going to cost you five grand to settle and 25 grand to go to court. I mean, I have this situation on the on the go right now with someone where I could have settled two months ago for a lot less than it's already cost me in legal fees. And it'll cost me four times more in legal mm-hmm. fees than it would have cost to settle him. But it's about setting a principle and a precedent because I think if everybody knows that you're, I'm a soft touch that you can just send me a legal letter and I'll pay you five grand or ten grand. Well, everyone's going to fucking do it, aren't they? I think yeah. you know. It's I think it's important to be able to sleep at night knowing that people aren't taking the piss. Yeah, hundred percent. Now, can you give three top personality traits you think make a leader? Three top personality traits that make a leader. Well, listen, I don't really think I'm a good leader, so uh, <laughs> you know. Stop. But I think uh, I think my quality is that I accept that I'm not, <laughs> and try and uh, and try, try and be better. Um, but I, th- no, I think if, what do I think makes a good leader? Transparency, you know, honesty, transparency, which I do think I tick that box. I always say that you know you might not like my answers, but 99 times out of 100, I always give you the honest answer. Uh, I think the only t- what the one time out of 100 I don't. It's not because I'm trying to lie, but there may occasionally be a situation where there just has to be confidentiality for uh, for, for for whatever reason. But I think you know, transparency. I think um, the willingness to do what you ask other people to do you, you shouldn't be asking someone else to do a dirty job if uh, if you're not prepared to do it yourself uh, i mean like if you haven't got the skill set that's one thing but you know certainly as a business owner if, i don't know if you're walking past shit on the floor you know you should be picking it up yourself and not uh, and not uh, you know calling in the cleaning crew what else transparency i think just ultimately showing other people what what you want them to do you know so I think you know you, you can't bollock other people for doing something if you don't if you don't behave in that in that same way. I think you know again I, I have a thirst to always learn more. You know, um, and you know it's a big, uh, I guess a big pet hate of mine that you know so so many staff who I've employed over the years who who never want to learn anything new, who never want to uh, I guess grow themselves. So I think it's I probably probably said the same thing twice, but I just think it's I think it's very important to uh, to show them how you want them to behave and what do well, what do you think what do you think three traits traits of a leader yeah i think loyalty is one mm-hmm. as we mentioned before for sure did i say that yeah you said yeah the first one you said no i said honesty transparency honesty yeah it's a funny one loyalty because i totally agree with you and i was, it was something we were talking talk about with harvey was talking about yeah. earlier again and i would you know i consider myself very loyal uh you know i think you know i I will always i'll always go out to bat for 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 anyone who's let's say who's good to me i mean also ultimately if you're on my team i'll go out to bat for you whether or not you're good or not but i also do know i do do that knowing that the second you don't work for me anymore you don't give a fuck Mm, yeah (laughs) (laughs) and you know if you're here right you go yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) it's true no it's true you're you're here you know you're here right now and if you've got a problem I will fucking do whatever it takes to help you with that problem, whether it's a yeah. work problem or a home problem. But next week, when you've got another job, you know, down down the road for a bit more money, you know, you won't remember, you won't even remember my name in a few months. Oh, of course. No, it but, would. You, no, 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 but you, you know what I mean. And, and, I know what you mean. But yeah, I think yeah. you know, and it was kind of one of the questions I was trying to talk to Harvey about. I think. But you can't let that get you down because mm. if you think like that, yeah. then ultimately, okay, if I think, oh, well, Molly's not going to do this for me if if well, once she's gone, therefore I'm not going to do this for her while she's with me, mm. then ultimately it just makes me depressed and miserable, and I'd yeah. I'd rather be I'd rather come from a place of, mm. of happiness than a place of depression. And I suppose that's a motivational thing as well. So if you're a leader, you need to be able to motivate people and build up morale and that kind of thing. So yeah. that that gut builds into that, I suppose. And you mentioned transparency just mm. a moment ago. Ooh. We know you are pretty transparent <laughs> anyway, but would we be surprised of anything like an activity or something that you do outside of business? Would we, would we be surprised by anything that you do? I don't think so. I think uh, I think everybody kind of knows everything, yeah. really. You know, yeah. it's uh, my, 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 my life lives on social media. <laughs> True. Um, no I don't, activities. I don't you really mentioned th- golf earlier on the phone. I was earwaking, but you play golf. I don't know. I don't play golf. Oh. Um, I've al- I've always I've always wanted to, not because I have this great desire to play golf, but I just think it's something that um, I miss out on a lot of business opportunities because mm-hmm. you know I get invited to golf days that I don't go on. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it was, I was Elena was on the phone too because we've got a, you know a week or so to kill in Spain before we leave. And I said to her, now that the summer's gone and less people around, let's pick up some golf lessons again. Mm-hmm. And it was literally this time last year that we were taking golf lessons again. Mm-hmm. Then and I, honestly, since I was about sixteen. I've started to hit some golf balls in the summer saying that, right, I'll do a couple of months on the range and then, I, and, and then I'll learn how to do go on the course. 
But then whenever it comes to then, I never go on the course. And the next time I say the same thing, I've been saying the same thing for like 30 fucking years. Mm. Uh, but I would I would like to play golf. But no, I don't, I, you know, I don't really, nothing people don't know about. I don't really do much. You know, I work, I go to the gym. Yeah. You know, back around with the missus and the kids and, you know, read a book and go to bed, really. That's, uh, that's about it. So, Matt, I have a question for you. Why pink? Why what, pink? Why pink? What's the obsession there? So, quite simply, I just like pink. Yeah. Right? I won't pretend that it doesn't suit me as well that it's a say a showy color or you know it it, it, wor it works as a bit of a a talking point but i would never do that if i hated it like if i hated yeah. pink I'm, I'm, i don't know i just I think there's some things you could like i don't know why do you like the taste of diet coke or what what why, why do you like you know mushrooms you know you, you, you yeah. just you just like them i don't know I, i just i like the color um but yes it, it, it suits me that it's a bit uh a bit pizzazzy on brand as well. Will always says that if you wear pink, you're a proper man because real men can wear pink. Thank you, Will. <laughs> <I'll tell him>. <laughs> <laughs> um, and last question, if you had to give up all your businesses but keep one, which one would it be? Well, we know fashion's the first one to go. <laughs> yeah, I got it done. <laughs> I mean, I, I just think the, let's say, the ability to lend money will be the business that, is with me until the day I die because ultimately it doesn't matter what the underlying business is it doesn't matter what the underlying problem is you know be, being able to find a business that wants to borrow money and structure a loan where hopefully the business gets what it wants and I get the money back it's great fun and it's and it's kind it's kind of timeless you know it, it, mm. it's it's sector proof it's recession proof it, it, it's everything so I think I think ultimately and also the thing is about it 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 can be done on my own. It doesn't need a team. It doesn't need, uh, you know, an infrastructure. It's it's a, a skill set that I, I can I can take with me on my own. So I think that will that will be the last thing that I ever give up. Nice. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>